Welcome, guys. Looks like we're streaming. My name is uh, Felix Hong. I'm one of the uh, moderators here in LCA. And today I have the pleasure of having Trevor, the CEO of Carrot, with us. And uh, Trevor's been on here before. He, great some, he gave some great content and really excited about the topic here talking about today. So, so Trevor, what are we talking about today? Felix, dude, I appreciate you hop, uh, having me on here today. And man, we're talking about something that actually spurred out of the Lab Code Agents Facebook group. So I was browsing around there as, as we do, and there's lots of great convos. And I'll, I'll show the actual conversation in the slides here in a second. Uh, but Tristan had posted a, a comment that said, um, you know, why do a lot of real estate agents think online leads aren't good? And there was an amazing conversation after that. So uh, what we're going to be talking about today, man, is diving into data of over 480,000 leads, online leads uh, from 2020 uh, to show you guys and gals what actually does work the best with data, what converts the best, what doesn't. And then we'll show you guys how to make all of your online marketing work, marketing work way, way, way better today. Wow. Cool. So, so proven strategies through data. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Let's <Exactly>. do it. Exactly. <laughs> cool. I'm going to share my screen and uh, guys and gals. So what we're going to be doing today, let me kind of get this right sized here. So you don't see the black boxes around the outside. Can you guys see my screen there? Yep. Perfecto. Uh, so what I'm going to be diving in today with y'all is a deep dive into conversion rates for house sellers, motivated house sellers, buyers, uh, through Facebook, Google ads, SEO, a little bit on direct mail. And I'm going to walk you guys through a kind of a guide and some things that you guys and gals can do to shift the way that we think about marketing in 2021 and 2022. Now, we all know that there's, there's things adjusting, there's things moving, there's a lot of dynamics to the real estate market right now. Uh, COVID is part of that. We've got, you know, some sort of impending market adjustments should be coming sometime in the next year or two, but there's like certain things that are kind of holding some of that back. Uh, we've got the, the tide that started years ago that we've been uh, at the forefront of here at Carrot of kind of the, the mashing together of the retail side and the wholesale side of real estate. Uh, so you see iBuyers kind of coming in in the middle, right? Your offer pads, open doors and Zillow. And so there's a lot of things happening in the real estate market right now. And one of the most important things that we all need to do uh, as entrepreneurs in this real estate market is figure out, well, how do I stand out, right? It's like, how do I stand out? How do I cut through the clutter? How do I make sure that the business I'm growing is one I actually enjoy to run? And it's not just me getting a bunch of leads. So we're going to dive into that data first. Uh, I'm totally game for any questions. And Felix, dude, if you have any questions, you'd interrupt me at all uh, uh, anytime during it. Uh, I probably have too many slides for today's presentation, so I'll go through as many uh, cool things as I can, and then uh, we can always connect later and dive deeper on some of these topics. All right, guys, so this was the the, the post that came up in the Lab Code Agents uh, group a few weeks ago, or uh, not a few weeks ago, a couple months ago. Uh, Tristan had posted, what do you think the main reason is that real estate agents continually say online leads suck? And if you guys and gals are watching this right now, if there's a chat box below it, pop it into the chat box on what your answer would be. You know, what do you think the main reason that real estate agents continually say online leads suck? And then here's uh, some of the comments. There was hundreds of comments in there, you know, all the way from uh, Todd up here says agents have unreal uh, unrealistic expectations. They need to get follow-up systems in place. If any of these resonate with y'all pop through the comments box. Oh my gosh, that's me. Okay. Uh, Yenny says, I'm one of those agents. I know I just, my follow-up's bad. Uh, you can see follow-up is a big, big theme here. Um, because most people suck at follow-up because two-thirds aren't ready to, to do something. So Ron is saying they're not motivated, right? A lot of those leads aren't motivated. Uh, it just keeps going, Maria, because uh, it's not now business. She's saying those leads I'm getting are just people who aren't ready to act right now. Well, what if I was to show you guys where on the internet to get leads that are ready to act right now and which ones are not ready to act right now? We'll show you guys with data. Okay, Peter, uh, you know, nurture um, uh, down here. Trevor says you get leads from all online sources. You get overwhelmed and don't properly follow up. So I'm just going to blast through these, but follow up, uh, lack of negotiation skills, uh, leads not being ready to, to take action or big, big themes in these. Okay. You guys can keep on seeing some of these, but the themes keep on going on. Alberto, uh, many want to, but few qualify to buy. So a lot of leads, but low quality once again, right? Uh, Chris, uh, her expectations, but realistically, they're not all the same. The sources of the leads matter. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is the sources of your online marketing and what sources. So Facebook, Instagram, Google, you know, SEO, um, Zillow, what sources are going to give you the best quality, highest conversion so you can work less, right? 
Um, and I'm just going to bounce out to this next slide to kind of review what I had found in that thread as I was diving into it. It spurred this conversation today that we all get to dive into. And uh, these are the five, re the five most common reasons in that thread that uh, real estate agents had said online leads aren't good. Uh, the first one was, is that people aren't good at following up or nurturing the leads. And that's hundred percent true. A lab code agents puts out amazing trainings. I saw some this week that are on nurture and follow up. So tap into those trainings. Y'all lab code agents puts out amazing, amazing training on that. So dig into those. We're not going to touch on that today. Uh, number two, not good at sales and closing leads to deals. hundred percent. Like there, there's other amazing trainings you guys can get in the LCA community to dive into sales. We're not going to talk about that today, but what if you can make sales more effective if you got the right leads? We're going we're to talk about that today. You know, Zillow, Zillow and realtor.com suck uh, in there. It says, and markets are too saturated, i.e. there's way too many people buying these leads and they're just not turning into deals for me. Guys and girls, pop in the comments box if you resonate with any of these reasons. Uh, online leads aren't motivated. And then number five, uh, hard to build trust from a distance. So these were the answers people gave. Now, they're all true in their minds. They're all true in their experience. What I wanted to show you guys is a different take on this. I want to show you guys and gals a different take from data that we see on how you can completely take these limiting beliefs and turn them upside, upside on, down on their heads. And how do you find the most motivated, highest converting, highest profit margin deals uh, through different sources based on our, our data? So you're at the right training, y'all. Uh, if you're a real estate agent, of course, or an investor, you know, wholesalers, flippers, uh, or both. Uh, we actually work with a ton of what we call hybrids. Uh, it's people who are both an agent and an investor. And I really feel that that's not the future. That's kind of like where we are right now, that sellers want to get an offer uh, and they want to get the, the you know an offer for listing too. So we work with a lot of hybrids. Uh, you want to attract the most motivated and highest converting seller and buyer leads to you this year without getting burnt out in the process. Okay. That's, that's my whole thing. Uh, our mission here at Carrot is to help, uh, help entrepreneurs build businesses of freedom and impact. You know, it's not, how do we get you guys more and more leads where so you're drowning in leads and you hate your business. It's how do we help you guys build a business that you enjoy that gives you freedom so you can make that impact. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is the types of leads that give you more freedom, not take away more of your time. Wow, then, that, that sounds great, uh, Trevor. So if, yeah. if I can just ask a question about that. Yep. How quickly are you able to normalize someone's, uh, some, someone's lead flow by, by number two and number three? Dude, an amazing question. So we'll, we'll go into this. I'll show you guys some charts. But the short of it is this, is depending on how competitive the market is, it's anywhere between three and 12 months to really stack on good what I call evergreen marketing. It takes work, dude. Like we'll we'll show the level of work it takes, but the the result on the other end is that commitment we've got to make. It's like what kind of business do we want to have? And we'll talk about that here in a bit. And then what are the steps to get there? And so yeah, somewhere between three and 12 months is what we usually see mm -hmm. when people execute the plan. Yep. Uh, and then number three, you've realized the normal ways of marketing, cold calling, posting on social media 10 times a day. Uh, you know, they're keeping you in a continual marketing hamster wheel and you want to get off of it or at least start to get off of it. So uh, what we're going to be talking about today, y'all, is not theory. It's a real peek behind the scenes from our data here at, at carrot.com uh, from over 480,000 leads. Now, that screenshot I took was from December uh, 15th. I re retook one today. It's actually over 480,000 leads in the, in the year of 2021. So you guys might be asking, where the heck does data come from, All right? Did we scrape it? Did we collect it from other people? No, uh, it's from our own data source from over 8,000 real estate professionals that we work with right here at Carrot. Um, we house their websites or what we call authority hubs. Uh, we'll go into here in a bit. And it's mostly the US, a little bit of Canada. And surprisingly enough, there's a really good house flipping and real estate scene down in South Africa uh, that we've been helping people dig into quite a bit. Uh, this data is from Jan 1st through December 31st of 2020. Um, and we specialize in hybrid agent investors. So most of the leads that we're going to show you guys and gals are actually sellers. You know, most of the time you see, you see data in the industry, it's usually buyers because buyers are just, you can get them from everywhere. Uh, these leads are mostly sellers. Now there's a lot of buyers as well, um, but mostly sellers. All right. So just to give you guys context, who the heck am I? Uh, my name is Trevor Mock, as Felix was mentioning before, was fortunate enough to hop on the, the Labco Agents podcast with Jeff a couple months ago, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm based here in Oregon, a small town in Oregon called Roseburg. It's kind of like 25,000 people. Uh, that's my family on the right at our vacation spot up in the mountains, and that's my work family on the left. That's my team at Carrot. 
Um, we've been fortunate enough to use exactly what I'm going to teach you guys today. I like the same marketing methods. We use evergreen marketing to grow carrot and we amplify it with paid and social evergreen marketing at the core amplify with paid and social. It gets us off the hamstring adds consistency. Uh, but we've been fortunate enough to grow this business. It's been an Inc. 505,000 list three years in a row. We'll make four years this next year. Uh, we're up, up uh, north of 40 full-time employees and we serve um, a lot of real estate investors and agents around the country. So what we focus on is this, you know, when someone does a Google search and they have high intent, um, like sell my house fast in Nashville, those first three results when I did a Google search were all carrot sites, okay? So that's what we focus on is building a platform that gives you an edge in that for both investors looking to buy houses and a lot of hybrids who are an investor and then can list it and agents as well, like Krista May Shore, who's a part of the LCA community, an amazing uh, agent down in Brentwood. And where, where we kind of sit, and this is what we're going to be talking about, this is where the data comes from, is we kind of sit right there in the middle. You know, we're not going to drive your traffic for you. We don't have follow-up systems built in place. What we talk about is how do, how do you make all of your marketing work better? Because all offline marketing drives online demand, right? If you do direct mail, if you do cold calling, if you're doing networking, open houses, anything at all, all of that is going to end up driving online demand because people are going to Google search your company name or your phone number or whatever it is. And you've got to make sure that the online part of it, which is the part most agents are missing, they have the online part, but it's not performing the way that it should. Um, you need to make sure the online part of it is performing for you. And we'll talk about how you can do that. And we'll look at the data. So we're going to be diving into the data first, and we're going to dive into making that shift from evergreen marketing to, I'm sorry, make, make the shift to evergreen marketing uh, uh, versus hamster wheel. And then uh, why social media shouldn't be your content hub. If we can get this far in, in the hour that we've got here, uh, in my belief, why social media should not be your content hub and why turning your website into an authority hub will help you actually win more deals. Uh, that's how you get evergreen and get off the, the hamster wheel. So before we dive into the data, I want to kind of cast a vision. Just let's sit back. Let's sit back, put the lead conversation over here, put all the data behind us and let's picture like where we want to go. Like where, where do we want to go in our business? And this is just for myself, but let me know guys and gals in the comments box, if you guys can relate to this, that uh, for me, I became an entrepreneur, you know, not so I could work more. Uh, it, it, it wasn't so I could work, you know, six, seven days a week. It wasn't so I could work 60 hours a week. Um, it was so I could get freedom. And so I could get flexibility. So I could like find a way to have a, a, a vehicle that I was passionate about working in, but also I could help make an impact. And I wanted, I wanted something that helped me get momentum more and more every year. Cause when we're, when we're in momentum as entrepreneurs, we're happy. Like we're in, when we're in positive momentum, then we feel good. When we're stagnant and we're in negative momentum, we're not happy no matter how much money we have in the bank. Like I, I know people who, you know, make a ton and ton of money but they're not happy because they're not in momentum moving forward on something that they believe in. And so on the left side is wherever you are in that picture versus where you want to go. On the right side is that visual of, of where you want to go and what your business uh, want, you want that to look like and how your business needs to look in order to serve you to get you that freedom and flexibility. In the middle of that is a gap. And what I found, Felix, through my previous experiences running uh, several companies before Carrot, I've been a real estate investor since 2004 myself. Um, buying and holding properties, investing, worked with a ton of investors and agents. And the one thing that I had this epiphany on, man, in 2012, as I was making a look, uh, looking to make a shift in my previous company uh, was, man, like what type of marketing was the marketing that actually gave me the most freedom in my business? And I started to write down all the marketing. We did cold calling. We sent out a lot of direct mail in my previous company. We did joint ventures. They all work, right? That's the thing. They all work. They all turn into money. But every single one of them required me to keep doing that thing over and over again in order to get the result again. And it kept me on this hamster when I'm looking back and going, man, I don't have freedom. I don't have freedom in my darn business. And that was my vision. And this business is trapping me. And I started to realize, you know, it's not really the business that's trapping me. It's the way that I was marketing. Uh, all the marketing works. All the marketing you guys learn, they, it all works. Like it all works. But the question is, what do you want your business to look like and what marketing will actually help you have the lifestyle that you want to live in your business? And you have to make that decision. It's a trade-off, right? And here's the reality uh, for most real estate agents and investors. I got this data from, uh, I think it was Playster actually. Uh, over half, 53% say they work the same hours or longer uh, today than they did their first year in business as an agent. 
um, uh, of all activities and practices that real estate agents spend time on, marketing and advertising take the cake. 62% of agents said that they devote at least an hour a day to marketing themselves and their listings. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, next came prospecting lead generation. 60% of agents said they prospect on a daily basis with more than a quarter, 26% devoting several hours a day to finding new leads. Guys and gals, this is great. It all works. But once again, I want you to picture yourself in five or 10 years, 20 years, or, or is what you're doing today, all that prospecting, is it building momentum or is it keeping you on the hamster wheel to, to where you've got to do that forever uh, to keep the income coming in? Only 31% of agents spend more than $1,000 a year on marketing. Like that, that amazes me because we're, we're, you, know, you get the leverage with, with, the, with the spend. You don't get leverage with your time. And so I want to show you guys where you can kind of spend a little bit more where you start when you start to get that, that budget there uh, and leverage your time better because um, barely any agents are, are spending any marketing, money on marketing according to the study. And 33% uh, were able to so support themselves and their families within the first year. 25% first year, of agents took two years or more. And so when we're looking at all these stats, we're looking at real estate agents spending a lot of time on marketing, which we have to in order to grow. Uh, we're looking at people spending several hours a day on marketing because it's usually hamster wheel, not all the time, but usually. Um, and we, we find that a lot of agents aren't able to get true freedom, especially in that first one to three years. And so how can we do that? And I wanna ask you guys this question and we'll dive into the data. You know, do you ever feel like this hamster on the, on the wheel? where you yeah. get on the hamster wheel, right? And you start walking, it gives you immediate feedback. And this could be social media posting. It could be, you know, going out there and doing an open house. It could be whatever it is, cold calling, it all works. Like you hopped on the hamster wheel, you made the call, you did the social post, you got the result, you got the feedback, amazing. But then what happens to keep that flywheel going, you've got to keep calling, you got to keep posting, you got to keep calling, you got to keep posting. And then you end up finding, you end up finding yourself on a vacation in Disneyland uh, with your computer out or your phone watching your kids go on a roller coaster while you're cranking away in your social posts because you kind of got to keep it up. And that's not why most of us got into business. So <clears throat> that was a little bit of my journey in a hyper, hyper condensed uh, fashion. <clears throat> and I want to walk you through kind of what my findings have been over the years and how you guys and gals can shift that marketing and use the data I'm going to show you here in a bit to make your business not just grow, if growing, if growth is what you want, like we don't have to grow our businesses. If we want to grow our businesses, it should be serving a purpose. It should be serving a purpose to help us reach the, the lifestyle we want to reach or help us make the impact we want to make, not just to, re to grow our business because Sally at this mastermind I went to has more, does more deals than I do. And I should do more and I should be more ambitious. You should grow your business if that helps you have the life you want to live in or make the impact and chase your purpose more. Trevor, I love that. So, so uh, agents need to look at the lifestyle they want to have, the, the, the time with their families, what's important to them. The, the last uh, broadcast you did with Jeff, you said the non-negotiables, right? So mm -hmm. what are the non-negotiables? And then, and then really having your business work around the non-negotiables. I, I love that. Um, that you, the, the example of, of Disney World and, and watching your kids ride on the roller coasters, but you're on a laptop, that that's definitely hamster wheel. And, mm -hmm. and I, I cringe when I heard that because I, I don't want to be that dad. I don't want to be that person that's watching my kids have fun and, and not making memories and enjoying that time with them. So, um, dude, like this is, this is great stuff. Um, and, and can we go backwards a little bit? So I, I want you to stay on the slide, but yep. you, uh, you said something that, um, just, was really, really impressive. It blew my mind. So most of the leads because of, of how you do the marketing is actually seller leads. So we don't hear that too often in the online space. Yep. And, and that, that, that just blew my mind. So if you just, you, you guys are just joining in, make sure you watch this, make sure uh, you, you really research Trevor and what, what Carrot does, because he said that most of the leads that are coming from these, uh, what he does in marketing for these agents are seller leads or listing leads. Mm -hmm. Yep, hundred percent. And and dude, this is what we'll get into here in a little bit too. Felix is the whole hybrid thing, man. It's such a big opportunity that most agents and investors aren't kind of tapping into this yet. Uh, and and we'll we'll talk about why hybrid is going to be so critical. It's a whole another call, but why hybrid is going to be so critical moving forward because most of the leads that our investor clients get are sellers, and eighty percent of those leads are want retail. And then they end up throwing these leads away, man. So there's like a massive, massive opportunity here. 
So when we start to look at the different types of marketing that we have here, right? I've got this matrix I created called the momentum and freedom growth model. On the left side of this, Felix, we've got leverage. Okay, that's high leverage to low leverage marketing activity. In the bottom, we've got conversion. So how well does this thing actually convert once you get a message in front of somebody? There's low conversion in the left and the high conversion in the right. So if we start to go through this matrix and look at the different types of marketing that we're using in the real estate space, over here, we have one-on-one -on -one selling, okay? Going to the coffee shop and meet with the person. Uh, that's the referral that came over, right? Door knocking, open houses, those types of things. You guys can fit other types of things in this box. But that's a very, very high conversion methodology, but it's low leverage, okay? You, you can only get in front of so many people and, and, have, and have that work. So high conversion, low leverage. And so then the next thing is, well, amazing. I tapped out there because I, I, I'm showing up to as many coffee meetings as I can and I'm knocking on as many doors as I can. I only have so much time. How do I get more leverage from my marketing? Because what I'm doing is working, but it's not sustainable, right? So the next thing is, well, shoot, on the other end of the spectrum, we have high leverage, but low conversion. Uh, sending out broadcast emails, blast emails, social media marketing is high leverage. You can get your message in front of hundreds or thousands of people, but conversion is, is lower. Radio and TV advertising, mass marketing, it works. Uh, high leverage, low conversion. And then you start to get into some of these other ones that are either really good or really bad. So cold calling works amazing. You know, uh, tons of real estate agents use it. Tons of real estate investors use it. Guys, if it's working, keep doing it, especially if you found an amazing way to create a process out of it to where you don't have to pick up the phones all the time and do that. But it is a low leverage, low conversion activity. We have to make a lot of phone calls uh, and it's not very high leverage because someone physically has to sit there to make those phone calls, whether it's you or somebody else. Uh, so with this one, you have to get someone to get on the hamster wheel for you to make those calls, or you have to be on the hamster wheel every day making those calls. Low leverage, low conversion, but it works really, really good. Um, then over here in the upper right is high leverage, high conversion, which is organic. That's people coming to you. It's online evergreen marketing that we'll walk about here and uh, talk about here in a second. That's where you, you put up content. You put up the right content on the internet. It's available uh, 24 hours a day. It doesn't work just for just for a few hours or a few weeks like a direct mail piece does or a cold calling campaign does. It works for years uh, and it builds up momentum and it has high leverage, man, because you do the activity once and it brings in customers and leads forever or for years at least. And then it has a really high conversion because it enables you to build relationship with people really well. And COVID actually only accelerated this trend uh, with people searching online. And we'll show you guys the exact data on how COVID impacted our customers' leads and traffic here in a second. So let's go into the data. Uh, data on over 450, it's actually 480,000, as you'll see in the screenshot, I update that here in a second. But we're gonna talk about two parts of conversion. We're gonna buzz through the data section, y'all, because I wanna, I wanna get to the meat uh, after the data, which is walking through evergreen marketing examples and showing you guys, where do you put that content? Where do you put that evergreen marketing uh, on what we call an authority hub, not just a website? So the two parts of conversion are this. You have the traffic becomes a lead, and then you have lead becomes a customer. And those are two parts of the conversion part of it. Hey, how effective is my, is my tool for converting a visitor into a, a lead? And then how, how effective is my follow-up process of negotiation uh, changing a lead from a customer? And so we're going to look at traffic to lead data first, Felix, and then we'll dive into lead to customer data. And these are two sides. If you're an agent, you need to look at both. Because if we go back to that lab code agent's um, thread that we were talking about, a lot of people are talking about, man, they're really low quality. What they're picturing in their mind is they're low quality because it's the lead to customer close ratio is low for them. But if we attract the right customer, if we attract the right prospect through the right type of marketing, both your, your traffic to lead conversion and your lead to close conversion ratio can dramatically increase. And you can, actually, uh, you can actually get fewer leads and close the same amount of deals or more with less work if you adjust the way that we do our marketing, okay? So here's an overall look. And if you guys wanna know where we grab this data, we hook up Google Analytics to every single one of our clients' websites. And we have a portal where all the data comes in one spot. And we can track literally everything you can ever picture or ever imagine what happened on a website at the granular data, a granular level. And so how has COVID impacted customers traffic and conversion. So on the left side of this one right here, we have what, what Google calls users. And you can see that first little orange arrow where I put the words COVID hit, that was right around March 10th, March 14th, when a lot of the, um, the shutdown orders started to happen around COVID. 
what we immediately started to see is about a 15 to 20% dip in traffic. So this is people that are going to the internet and making Google searches to buy or sell a home. About a 15 to 20% dip in traffic happened immediately when COVID shutdowns happened, like literally the day that they all started to roll out. Now on the right side, this is where it gets really interesting. Okay, on the right side, it's the same time frame, but that's conversions. That's someone who lands on a website and actually fills out the opt-in form. Now, this doesn't track phone call leads, Felix. This is just someone who, who fills out a form on there, right? Seller, buyer. Now, on that side, we actually saw conversion rates on websites drop by 25 to 30% at the same time. The difference is here on what, 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 what has happened with COVID, and I'll go through key takeaway, takeaways here in a second, is as you see on the left side, demand and traffic has increased. You know, demand for buyers searching for homes has increased and demand for sellers actually searching to explore selling has increased uh, dramatically, even, even more than pre-COVID numbers. On the right side, though, it tells a different story. The conversion rate never really bounced back up to pre-COVID conversion numbers that we held strong for years. Okay, the conversion rate's still soft. This is across the board. It doesn't matter what lead type we're talking about. It's, it's uh, sellers or buyers. You can see it took about a 30% dip. It took about a month and a half to two months to get back up to a respectable level. Then it kind of jockeys around a little bit. Now, what does this mean? Like, what does this mean for you as a real estate agent? Well, number one, a healthy percentage of sellers and some buyers are staying on the sidelines, potentially waiting it out during COVID still. Uh, we, we all look at, at inventories really low and house prices going up and interest rates low, and it's really driving a lot of demand, right? But what are those things driving that demand? Well, of course, there's the foreclosure moratoriums that have happened from COVID. So that's keeping a lot of foreclosures off the market. Uh, and then there is a lot of demand, but where else, um, you know, is, is that lack of, of uh, inventory coming from? Well, our data shows that there's a lot of sellers and buyers still searching to sell and buy, but a hunk of them are saying, you know, I'm not ready to take that next step yet. I'm not ready to pick up the phone or put in my information in here to, to sell my house. I'm going to wait this out. I'm going to see what's actually going to happen with the market, or I'm going to see what's going to happen with COVID. Okay. So uh, this is really, really important because they're still showing intent. So don't stop your marketing if your cost per lead has increased. Double down on it and improve on it. I'll show you guys what you can, what you can improve. What I see a lot of real estate agents doing, investors as well, is they'll see their Google, their Google ad costs go up or their Facebook uh, ad costs go up or their cost per leads go up a little bit. And they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not getting my you know, $1 buyer leads anymore or, or 30, 4, 30 or $40 seller leads anymore. And I'm going to throw it in the towel. And I'm going to throw in the towel. It's like, no guys, right now is when you need to double down on it, but double down in the right way because the sellers are still searching and they're going to be ready to sell eventually. And then you need to be in front of them when they are. For that reason, retargeting is more important than ever right now. Okay, if, if you're going to do no other Facebook advertising at all, put it into retargeting and continue to do your content, continue to get people in front of you. Your conversion rates on your websites and elsewhere might be a little bit lower than normal, but keep retargeting them. So when they are ready to sell or buy, you're in front of them. And then last is what do you retarget them with, right? And how do you get them in front of the right things to build trust and credibility? Well, consistent, what I call evergreen content to build trust, to build authority, okay, to build that credibility. We'll talk about that here in a bit. So let's dig into the data a little bit more. Um, now, organic uh, SEO, so someone landing on a, web search, a website from a Google search, this is not the ads, it's actually organic listings, convert a visitor to a lead 50 to 200% better than almost every other source that we saw in our data. So once again, this is uh, 483,715 individual leads. This does not include phone calls. So if someone landed on the website and called the phone, which we usually uh, can account for about the same amount of phone calls come in as online leads comes in. Um, so we're almost 800,000 leads in total last year, if we, if we look at that estimation, but just web submits 483,000. Over here, you see the conversion rate, uh, which is 3.72 on average. Now, what that means there, Felix, is someone's website on their homepage, if it's really optimized for conversion, might be converting a seller at 13% or 15%. This is literally every, every person who landed on any of our clients' websites on any entry page. It could have been a random blog post. It could have been a random property listing. On average, 3.72% of people landing on any page at all, even if they're not conversion pages, turned into a lead. Okay. And so when we look at this, we go, well, it wasn't the highest um, one because direct was in there. Now, what is direct? It's a whole other call too. But Google lumps a bunch of stuff together. You know, that could be someone physically putting in your, your, your URL. 
because they got their your, they got your business card or something. And Google does lump in other organic searches into that. But guys, look at this social media. Uh, it's a little bit lower conversion rate, paid searches lower. And we're going to go on down the line, dive into this data deeper. Okay, so traffic quality, key, key takeaways here. Not all marketing is created equal, y'all. Okay, certain types of marketing and leads deliver higher quality prospects and require less work to convert. So what are those? We're going to talk about what those are and how and how you can do that. Okay, number two, when your website's set up correctly, uh, more on that later here in a bit, uh, I'll, it, it'll boost your conversion rate on all of the marketing you do. So if you're doing direct mail, if you're doing cold calling, if you just have the broker provided website or a custom site that's not set up to really perform and build authority and credibility the right way or rank well in Google, you might actually be losing leads and deals right now because your website's not set up correctly. And you know, and, and guys and gals, I want you guys to write down what your average profit per, per transaction is, what your average commission, write that in a piece of paper, and then ask yourself how many leads and deals you're okay with losing this year because of underperformance on your website. And that, that's one of your aims you got to solve this year. Dude, this work, this is, this is really interesting. So all, all you guys and gals who do social media marketing, which most agents do, and it works great. Uh, I want you to raise your hands behind the screens here, pop in the comments box, what you, what you do most of your social media marketing on. Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Where are you spending your time on? Well, guys, this is the data from last year. Uh, Facebook, of course, it's not a surprise, drove by far the greatest number of leads uh, that came in from social. Okay. Um, but then Instagram, uh, was was you know not too far behind that between Instagram and Instagram stories. But dude, this is what's really interesting. I'll show the findings here in a bit. Okay. Uh, Yelp right here obviously converts good because people are looking for reviews. So they're closer to the end of the buy cycle at that point, probably it gets leads. Um, Pinterest got a few leads, but I wouldn't really focus a lot of energy and effort there. But what are some key takeaways on social? Well, Instagram stories, the swipe up y'all converts the best of all social traffic. Um, so if you have the 10,000 followers, start to leverage that better, start to find better ways to drive people to your authority hub, to your, to your website, if it's set up to convert well, uh, because they're in the mood, they're in the mode to be able to, to opt in, to convert as long as your website is optimized for mobile. YouTube is going to be a great growth channel for many of you who are wrapping, who are diving into video, which we encourage you, you, you to do that. Um, make sure though, you're including your URL of your website at the top of that description. Cause you guys saw a lot of leads that came in from YouTube, just from the description thing in our data, guys, put your darn URL up there and make sure you put calls to action uh, that YouTube lets you do. You can get hundreds of leads through that. If you do it right, uh, Facebook's the higher volume. Uh, okay. It's just lower conversion. You just gotta be okay with that. And I wouldn't focus on trying to do all of these, right? Kind of my, my suggestion is pick your one or two and just go all in on that for social this year and get really good at it. You know, don't, don't try to spread yourself too thin on it. Get, get really good at one or two. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one. It's more of an obvious, hey, check the box. We talked about it kind of thing. But mobile is obviously increasing every year. Uh, mobile is the majority of traffic on real estate agent and investor websites, and it actually converts better uh, uh, from visitor to lead when you have your website set up correctly. So on average, you can see uh, our clients' websites converted better on mobile than desktop because they're set up that way to do that. And here's a couple things you guys can do to make your websites perform better on mobile and attract more of those evergreen leads. Uh, number one, pull up your darn website on your cell phone, guys and gals, right now. Like, pull it up and start to flip through it and ask yourself, it's like, uh, if my average client, knowing who your average client is, saw this website, would it be easy for them to navigate? Would it be easy for them to find what they're looking for? Are the forms and form fields big enough for a thumb and a finger to get into and type? And is it easy? And you know, all that kind of stuff. Try it out. Test it out. Send it to your family member. Hey, what was easy? What was hard? Uh, but you need to make sure you're always looking at your website, not from how pretty is it on a desktop computer, but how functional is it on your cell phone first? And then second, look at your desktop and say, okay, now let's make it pretty over there. But way too many agents look at the desktop and go, it's got to look, it's got to look just like this, right? It's got to look amazing. Da, da, da. Most of your visitors aren't, aren't looking at it on desktop, but many are. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that also helps your, your SEO ranking on Google. If, if it's uh if it's optimized for for mobile exactly man and make sure your websites load really fast so we were in a third party study by fresh chalk um that you know brought in all the website builders including the big ones wix and weebly and squarespace and we were the fastest by far so guys make sure that your ears is loading fast go to gtmetrics.com put in your url in there and see um and, and see what your grade is 
aim for an A or better, and that's going to help you convert better. Uh, it's going to also help your website rank better as well in Google. Okay, uh, so the same thing. I'm going to buzz through these, uh, Felix, so we have time to dive into the Authority Hub and Evergreen Marketing parts a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, seller conversion rates, same thing, same patterns um, um, are here, guys. Organic and then paid search and then social by conversion rate. So you're going to have to get fewer eyeballs on your websites. If they come from organic, you're going to have to work uh, less over the long period of time versus social or paid. But social and paid work amazing, especially as you're building up that organic um, SEO. Uh, same thing with rent to own leads. So if you're in the rent to own business, uh, and, you know, rental tenants and same thing with buyers, but you can see buyers actually was even bigger conversion rate on uh, organic was so much higher for buyers. It wasn't even close. It's almost double everything else, including social. So what does that mean? Y'all? Well, it means we can drive sometimes half the traffic, but still get the same result and actually a better result because those leads oftentimes convert uh, at a, at a much better rate. So evergreen or organic marketing does outperform all the other traffic sources as far as conversion rate goes. So people are more ready, they're more ready to act. And so when we saw the, all the comments before in that thread where people said they're not ready to go, it's because we're tapping into places where people are not in, in the mood to, to find a solution. You know, we're, we're, we're posting into Facebook or Instagram, which is amazing, but people are not in a solution finding mode. They're in a look at Aunt Betty's, you know, cake she made mode. They're in a let's waste some time mode. And they are going to fill out the form, but they might not be in a, in a mode to, to make a decision now, which is why organic uh, tends to get those higher quality leads. Um, social and direct is close behind. So now let's look at the, the lead to cl customer close side of it, the equation. Uh, in this study from HubSpot, the lead to customer close. So once you actually get the lead, okay, now what types of sort of marketing sources are actually going to convert into a, a customer at a higher rate? So i.e. I can get fewer leads to get the same amount of business or even more business. Well, over on the left side was SEO. So that's people going to Google. Uh, over on the right side is outbound marketing. And then right there in the middle is paid and social media. So somewhere between two and three times higher conversion rate once you get a lead through organic SEO versus social or outbound. Now, once again, we're not saying to not do those things. Okay, th that's where you're going to get your volume. All we're saying is understand and recognize that S SEO and, and inbound actually is evergreen marketing. It's going to be around for months and years while the other ones, social media and outbound, they convert lower and they're going to keep you on the hamstrung because you have to continually post and have to have to continually send. Here's some other kind of cool data sets. You guys can take a screenshot of this and we'll dive into evergreen marketing in more detail in the next uh, next 10 minutes and wrap up kind of showing you guys some quick ways and how to how to make your website into an authority hub. And I don't have all I don't have enough time to go through all the slides. So if there are questions at the end, we can answer questions and um, we have free training you guys can dive into to, to hit this at a deeper level. OK, so average lead to close ratio. So radio and TV advertising, it's going to take you one. Uh, it's going to take you 50 to 60 leads to get a deal there usually. And I'm talking sellers here. OK, we're, we're talking sellers here. OK, um, cold calling uh, between one and 50, uh, between, between 40 and 50 leads turn into a deal uh, there. Uh, direct mail uh, around 40 leads to a deal with direct mail. Uh, Facebook ads, somewhere between 20 and 30 leads to a deal for sellers uh, done the right way. Google ads, between 10 and 20 leads into a deal, uh, according to our data. Organic search, so those, those leads we were talking about where someone does a Google search, and we'll show you examples here in a second, uh, but, uh, one in eight to 15 leads turns into a deal uh, with that. And then Zillow, it's all over the map there because re Zillow really does depend on how fast you uh, respond to it you know, your negotiation, like all that stuff. But on average, we see in our surveys, it's around one in 40. Some people say one in 100. Another person talked to you one in 20, but it's it's up there. So if you look at this, guys and gals, look at the types of marketing. And, and, and the big takeaway here that I want, I want you guys to see here in a second, I guess here's an example. Tyler Ford's an agent and an investor down in Tucson. He's with EXP. And he sent this through in his CRM and he had started to see the increase happen. He said, I've moved from about one in 25 leads to close one in 18 now. Now he's closer to one in 12 to one in 13 uh, since I talked to him last. Guys and gals, pop in the comments box. Who would like to have to, have to get only 10 to 25 leads, seller leads to actually close one into a transaction? And then the rest of them, you put them follow up and close probably later, right? Uh, this guy here, Eric Stanu, he's an agent and investor out of Cincinnati. He said, I closed one in five of the, the carrot seller leads in a deal. He said, his clients in his office are asking how he does it. 
It's like, what does all this data mean? Everything works. It all works, right? Uh, okay, but online leads are not created equal and results in quality can really vary drastically based on the source. Uh, don't look at lead cost or lead volume as your measure of success. And I think that's one thing we, we all kind of get trapped into Felix is we go, Oh, I got a hundred leads. My buddy got 300 or, or, you know, he, he or she bought these leads at a buck a piece and I'm getting mine at five bucks. I must be doing bad. Like, no, maybe yours are better quality. Like maybe yours close at a higher rate. Okay. Don't, don't, don't get locked into those numbers, get locked into, um, it, you know, the cost per deal. And is that sustainable? Is that, is that making you money? What is my cost per deal? And how quick can I close those leads? Okay, getting more leads is not always better. If they're low quality, uh, it means more work. And, and what do I mean there? So let's say you're doing cold calling. You're doing all those marketing methods that require you to, to go through 40 to 60 leads to get a deal. How do you process those leads? Well, someone's got to talk to them. You know, someone's got to reach out to them. They got to go into some sort of follow-up sequence. Who's going to do all that stuff? Every single time you bring in a ton, a huge volume of those leads, it takes a lot of energy and effort to get through, to vet them out, to talk to them, to, to pass them through. That means uh, expense in your time and money. But what if you could get, could close deals with a fifth or a quarter of the same amount of, of, the, of the amount of leads, you can lower your costs, lower your time to go through them and still have your income be the same or better. And that's what we're about here. That's how we create freedom, guys. That's how we get off the hamster wheel. So what is evergreen marketing? Because I talked a lot about it, right? The data shows us the organic or what I call evergreen marketing uh, converts the best. Now, it doesn't mean that's where you're going to get the most deals. Your volume, okay, your volume is going to come from outbound marketing, your cold calling, uh, direct mail, wh whatever it is. That's where your volume is going to come from because you're going to activate demand. You're going to activate demand where someone maybe isn't searching yet. And they're going to go, you know what? Yeah, I've got the postcard. I think I might want to look into selling. Or you know what? I got the call. I wasn't really looking into selling or buying, but you know what? Yeah, let me talk to you. So you're going to activate demand that's not actively going out there trying to find a solution yet. But where, where the evergreen marketing comes in is you're actually capturing demand that's already there. Like you're stepping in front of that flow that's already there with content that builds trust and credibility. And then you stack and build momentum over the long term. And I drew, I drew this graphic that kind of walks through. This is my journey in my previous company and now with Carrot. And we've done the same thing with tons of investors and agents as well. But the, le the yellow one is hamster wheel marketing. It's your outbound. It works great. And if you build a team and great systems, you can level that out a lot. But most agents are kind of in that boom and bust where you're crushing it, doing all the calls and you're crushing it, doing here, then you take a vacation, right? And you're not making all those calls. And you don't have someone doing it for you. So then your leads go like this and you're like, okay, it's fine. I'll, I'll get back after vacation and pick it back up. Your income takes a dip three to six months later as a result because, you know, your, your lead flow went down. And then it goes back up because you work your butt off like, All right, I'm calling again. I'm calling again. I'm doing this again. Okay, money's back up. And then you kind of got tired and burnt out of cold calling or you got tired and burnt out of posting on Facebook and Instagram all day. So then you stop that for a little while. Then your leads went down like this again. And the cycle goes on forever until I've seen so many people get burnt out on the process. They just either switch careers or um, pull back and just sit at a, a very small level. On the flip side is evergreen marketing where it's going to take time. Like it's going to take time to build it up. You've got to get content consistently online. I'll show you guys a couple examples in the time that we've got here. And then you kind of stack it on top of each other and it starts to build. So what is evergreen marketing? Well, Google's definition is retaining freshness or interest. It's perennial, universally and continually relevant, not limited in applicability to a particular event or date, i.e. you can put stuff up online and if you do it the right way, people will see it for a long time, not just for 72 hours on Instagram. Okay. Marketing uh, you do once, um, you know, is, is you do it once and it works for years, not hours or days. Okay. That's how you really get momentum. Uh, it's like kind of like stacking bricks is, is the way that I look at it, Felix. We'll talk about that here in a bit. And then going back to this little hamster that got tossed off the wheel, what's hamster wheel marketing? Well, a hamster wheel is any situation that's, that seems to be endlessly without goal or achievement. Like that's literally the definition from Google. Any situation that seems to be endlessly without goal or achievement, you're getting on this hamster wheel over and over again. And you can't find yourself getting a lot closer to your end goal. You're doing the activities that might be working to do something, but you're not getting a lot closer. In marketing terms, this is any marketing that works for a short time after you do it, has a limited lifespan, and you got to do it all over again to get results coming in. That's your cold calling, direct mail, posting on social, open houses. It all works, y'all. I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just saying recognize if your whole business is built off of this, 
then you are likely going to look like the hamster at some point. Now we say, build your business off of evergreen and amplify it with hamster wheel as you want to and as you need to. Okay, uh, what, what most people teach, and once again, because it works and because it's the standard is post on social a bunch, um, you know, 100 dials a day, it all works, guys, like keep doing it if it's working for you and ideally find someone else to do it for you. Like that's how you get off the hamster wheel, you put someone else on it for you. Okay, so then you, you got off of it. Uh, but if our dream as entrepreneurs is freedom and impact, you know, how will that type of marketing ever get us there? It's like we, we got to be great at building a team or we've got to find a new way to market. And uh, Tyler Ford, going back to his example, uh, he switched over to Evergreen. This is about three to four years ago now. We've got a couple case studies up with him. And he had adjusted his goals and he blew by those goals that first six months. And this is kind of what, what it looks like now. He's got his investor site with Carrot to get motivated house seller leads. He takes a lot of those seller leads and moves them over to retail. Okay. He's like, awesome. You Google sell my house fast Tucson or, you know, any phrase around selling your house in Tucson, he's ranking really well. He gets these really consistent leads. You can see right there in the carrot system, the arrows, it says Google search, Google search, Google search, Google search, Google search, Google search. Those are all evergreen organic Google search leads that he's getting coming in. And it really helped him scale the business. And so when we start to look at this, it does take a big mental shift y'all, because once again, this is not immediate. Okay, it's not something where you're going to be able to like put one piece of content up and then tomorrow you're just raining in leads and raining in deals. Okay, the results come over time as you consistently commit to putting out good content. And well, like so I'll show you guys an example, but running out of time here. Uh, but your work actually reduces over time. Okay, your work reduces over time because you're building momentum. Uh, on the inverse, if you're if you're doing hamster wheel marketing, your work pretty much stays the same all the time. It's never going to go down unless you pile a team into it to do the work for you, right? Um, and many people will be tempted to go back to hamster wheel marketing because it does take patience to create content that ranks in Google. And so just think about momentum, you know, is your current marketing building momentum or keeping you on that hamster wheel? And here's, here's a few quick tips and then I can answer some questions. Um, and then we can show, I'm just gonna show one slide Felix from the uh, section where it talks about a, an authority hub. Uh, okay. I'd be happy to come back and literally just teach how to build an authority hub. But like, how do you make your website into an authority hub and do a whole 30 minute to 60 minute workshop on that? But I'll, I'll give people a glimpse with one slide of it. We also but have a when, great question that came in. And uh, yeah. Greg asks, uh, do Carrot clients still need uh, and use external CRMs like Follow Up Boss and Call Action? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, man. So what we've hyper focused in on is, is the middle part, which is the website part or what we call the authority hub. Um, we have a really simple lead manager and we're building text and email follow-up this year, but yeah, you can integrate it with follow-up boss or anything that integrates with Zapier. And that's what a lot of clients do. It's like the leads come in and sh shoots them off to something else. Really good question. Uh, dude, so here, I'm going to show you guys a couple quick tips here. So we've been talking about evergreen marketing. You're probably going like, well, what, what does it really look like? Right? Well, what we want to do is get inside the mind of those sellers or buyers. We want to say, what are those motivated sellers typing into Google right now? Um, and also, where do they go to find solutions? Well, are they actually going to Facebook or Instagram to find solutions? They're usually not. They're going there to be entertained, but they go to Google to find solutions. You know, they might type a, a phrase like, sell my house in blah, right? Sell my house in Brentwood. Uh, Krista May Shore is ranking number one in Google for the phrase, sell my house Brentwood, California. Sell my house Brentwood. She gets leads from that quite, quite consistently from people who are raising their hands saying, oh, awesome. You rank there. I'm going to click it. Oh, you're credible. Oh, I see your content. I see. I like you. You're, you're trustworthy. I'm going to submit my information here and I want to sell my house. Um, or they might type a phrase like get, get cash from my house and blah. So if you're a real estate agent and you're not an investor who buys houses for cash, you can still go after these types of phrases in Google and then just talk with that person, see if they actually want retail. If they don't collab with the local investor and share in the profits from that investor, that's a huge opportunity that a lot of agents aren't, aren't, aren't capturing. Uh, most agents are taking the listings that have no equity or where the person just like has unrealistic expectations that where I want to sell now. And they're saying, ah, oh, they're not serious. And they kick them out the door. Some of those might be your biggest profit deal deals. You might actually be able to help that seller better. If you partner up with an, an investor locally and say, Hey, this one doesn't fit me, but it might fit you. Is that, is that a good investment deal for you? And then sharing those profits and you'll, you'll serve the sellers and buyers even better. 
you know, houses for sale on the river in blah, best real estate agents, insert city name. These types of phrases are phrases people are searching every single day. Or at the very end, your company name with the word reviews, right? So this is where the evergreen content comes in is uh, you want to you want to think how sellers think so sell my house fast tucson that's tyler tyler and tyler like those are literally all three of his 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 websites ranking one two and three he owns that phrase he closes three to six deals every single month 100 evergreen 100 or organic zero marketing budget um but it took him a year to year and a half to build that momentum and he's crushing it now and uh, for, for some of his sellers, he has his carrot site here on the investor side, then he has his agent site on the other side. And it comes in, it looks like this, it's got the Google search thing, it works, right? <clears throat> so then once you get someone on your site, what do you do next? Well, we wanna then retarget them back on Facebook. Well, what do we retarget them? We retarget them back just like Krista did here. Hey, attention East County sellers, cause you landed on a seller page of mine. If you're looking to sell, go click this thing and see how much your house is worth and drive them back to the standard. How much is your house worth page? Make it amazing on mobile. So it, it, that, that's the process right there. So you create content uh, that, that people are searching in Google and you can literally just go to Google. And this is like the quick tip here is if I'm in Brentwood, California, you know, how to sell my house, how to sell my house, Brentwood, like Google's giving me suggestions. And I would literally create a page that is called, that is titled that. And I would type it in and scroll down to the bottom. You know, how to sell my house in Brentwood. Um, and you can already see like there's a bunch of uh, searches that are related to Carrot because she's doing so well there. Um, your Brentwood housing market. That's an amazing piece of content right there. If people are Googling Brentwood housing market and Google tells us that, create a short video on your cell phone three to five minutes. Hey, this is Trevor with XYZ Realty. And I'm going to go through the, the January 2021 Brentwood, California housing market update in blah and talk for three to five minutes. Put that up into YouTube and then put that onto a website. And this is where most agents are missing it here, Felix, is most people will take that content and they'll email it out and they'll put it up on social and they'll, if we're lucky, they'll put it up in, on YouTube. But almost nobody's then taking that video, that three to five minute market update video, or that video that they uploaded to, 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 to Facebook, and then transcribing it and putting it on their website. And for a phrase like this, sell my land, uh, you know, just sell my land, or I'll, I'll type another, another phrase here. It's like Roseburg, Roseburg farmland as an example. I live in Roseburg and a lot of people look for farmland around here. What if you were ranking above LoopNet, above LandWatch, above Land and Farm, above Zillow even? Guys, you can't outrank Zillow when you niche. And it lands on a site like this. And it's literally a three minute and 26 second video of Danny, Mr. Real Estate Agent, who'd never wanted to sit down and write content. And he recorded a video. He uploaded it to YouTube, used our video post feature that automatically turns it into a written piece of content for you. It's like... Guys, that's all you got to do one or two of those things a week when you're out there on the job, when you're out there doing a market update, when you're doing that, record it and you can completely do without care. Just record the three to five minute video, put it on YouTube, go to rev.com, get the transcription, come over here to your site, put the video there from YouTube, put the transcription there, doctor it up a bit and hit publish with a good title. I know I'm kind of oversimplifying it there, but that's the high level of it, right? So I'm going to bounce out of the slides here. Because I, I went over that at a really high level. There's more content there. If anyone is looking for video marketing ideas, because uh, that's the biggest block that we get is like, I don't know what to do videos on. Uh, guys, go to carrot.com. It's a terrible URL, URL we put together here. Uh, carrot.com forward slash video dash marketing dash playbook. Um, and we're going to give you guys 52 video ideas. So one video idea every single week for 52 weeks. Uh, for real estate agents. And it's going to walk you through exactly what to do your video content on three to five minute video every week, upload it to YouTube, upload it to Facebook nat natively, get over to IG if you use IG. But then don't forget, if you're a carrot member, take it and put it in a video post where we'll rank, we'll, we'll yank all the words out of it and make a written blog post for you. Or if you're not a carrot member, go do it the manual way. But that's how you get your evergreen y'all. Okay, so many people are, are taking that content and putting it on hamster wheel uh, platforms which is your social, but that's going to be there for 72 hours max where people are going to see it. Then you got to keep posting. How do we make that content? You're already creating evergreen. It's three to five minute videos or longer. You put it on your website and you make sure that it's, it's got robust content. Um, last thing I'll show here, Felix, and I'll toss it over to you, man, is uh, I get a little bit too ambitious with my content, dude. Like I created way too much, 
<laughs> but uh, I'm going to show this because people might be asking now, well, cool. So you briefly walked through evergreen marketing. I do whole workshops on that topic, guys and gals. So I didn't have a lot of time on it. But now they might be saying, well, what is this authority hub thing? Like, how is it different than my normal site? Well, most websites, you know, if it's a broker provided website, it might be like literally a page that has your face name reviews. And if we're lucky, some property listings, right? <clears throat> and then uh, a lot of people have custom sites and a lot of their custom sites are pretty much, you know, hey, I'm Sally, the agent. Here's some IDX listings. Here's some cool reviews, uh, some things like that. Yeah, and most sites have that. They have the core pages, right? They've got your, hey, if you're looking to sell, click this link. Here's reviews. Here's an about page. Here's my listings. That, that's what most agent sites look like. But in this, in this, in this next stage of real estate, and you know, where we are right now, to really attract that evergreen market, we need to put content on our websites, not just on social. And so, what we suggest you do is create what we call niche or location pages. You know, same thing. Those aren't new, but the way that we do them to outrank Zillow. Uh, is new. Uh, most people create niche or location pages that are really hard to rank in, in Google. But you create a niche or location page for every single market, city, sub niche you do business in in that area. And we could show examples now or later uh, if we had time. And then after you do that, I would do that quarterly. So every single quarter when you're looking at your marketing plan, you go, cool, like, are there any other niches or are there any other, other locations we want to build pages on this quarter? Yeah, you know what? This neighborhood over here, we're wanting to really get into that. Let's build the page. Let's get the video. Let's you know, get the IDX, get the opt-in form on it. You know what? Uh, we're going to go into new construction now in Biloxi. And I know we already have a Biloxi page, but let's make a new construction homes for sale on Biloxi page. And so, you know, I, I would suggest doing three to 10 of those a quarter. And that's how you're stacking those evergreen bricks. You're going to start to get that traffic. And then on the weekly basis is the authority content. So this here is your conversion. That's your core website. This here is, is branching out and capturing people that are searching the niches you want to do business in. And this here is building your authority. And that's that three to five minute short video from Denny on a cell phone, you know, put through video post and post that really quick little, a little piece of content on your blog every single week. And uh, that can take you less than 10 minutes a week if you do it the right way. So I'm going to bounce out of these. I'll toss over to you, man. I know I buzzed through these really fast, dude. Um, and like I said, it's probably a whole nother workshop, but I want to respect your guys' time. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer, or answer any. And if, if anyone wanted me to dive into a couple more concepts uh, deeper, I can for sure. Awesome, brother. Great training, great content. And I was going to ask these questions. So uh, free on-demand training at care.com backslash evergreen and, and content at care.com backslash blog. So, so much value from Trevor here today. Uh, Trevor, so if someone wanted to get started at uh, taking back control of their life and, and having more time freedom and, and, uh, and focusing on the, those non-negotiables, um, how do they get started with you? Yeah, dude, the, the, the biggest thing, I, I know this isn't like the answer that most people want to hear, but <clears throat> making the shift is like a full fundamental shift in the way that we think about marketing. It, it's, it's, not a, it's not a strategy or a tactic where you're going to sign up and continue to do everything you're already doing. And then hope that you push some buttons with carrot and it's going to like magically spit out this evergreen, you know, dream for you. Um, and so that's the first thing y'all is really pull back. And I would, I would challenge you guys and gals to write down why you got into business, like write it down. What are those reasons? You know, minor freedom, flexibility, impact, right? That, that's why I got into business and write those down and then ask yourself what parts of your current business are not allowing you to get that and get real with it. Like these things are stopping me from doing that. If you're marketing, if your marketing is one of those things that you're having to be on that hamster wheel, then I would, then I would go, cool, ask yourself, am I fully committed uh, to invest this next year uh, to sh switching my marketing to hamster or to, to evergreen? If you're fully committed, then go to carrot.com, check us out. There's a demo for the agent side. That webinar is probably the best spot because I go into those concepts I talked about now at like deep, deep, deep level. It's a, it's a two hour workshop just on those topics. And by the end of it, whether you, whether you want to join carrot or not, um, you're going to have a map, you're going to have a plan and you're going to see exact specific examples of these content pieces, how they got ranking and how you can do the same thing. Awesome. And, and I wrote down a list of questions to ask you and you basically shot through all of them. So I, I only have a couple more and we've got some from the crowd here. So one, um, Tyler asked, uh, can you work on existing websites that I have, like like WordPress sites, or or do you rebuild a site um, separately? 
Yeah, awesome question. So with our with our software, our technology, it's all built on our system. And so the websites, the tools, all the tools built into those websites, video posts, which is that feature that automatically turns your short YouTube videos into written content. Uh, that's all built in. So we have a ton of free training that you guys can go go through that training and, and, and apply it the best you can to your site. Um, and then there are some advantages too that if like sometimes Felix, when we when we did in the past, go try to optimize someone else's site, we would end up adjusting it so much. It's like, well, we would just be doing what we've already built over here. So it's like, just go use that. But I understand that that people are baked into some investments that they've got and they love their sites. Amazing. Take these concepts and go uh, uh, go apply them because you don't have to have carrot to make it work. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't have to have carrot to make it work at all. We just make it easier. And, and uh, sort of to, to go back and piggyback off of that also. So Greg was asking, uh, does, does Carrot own all of the websites or if, if uh, he becomes a client and he, he does this, can he port it later or, or have someone else host it later? Uh, awesome question. So we don't own the, the websites themselves. So after you launch, it's just kind of like Wix, right? If you were to launch a website on Wix, they own the technology and the platform. Uh, all of the content that you put on there, you own. Like that's that's your IP. And if you were to move off of Wix or any other website platform out there, you would just have to take your content and move it over. And so Carrot's similar. Um, uh, you can't take like the stuff that's unique to us, the stuff that we had created. Uh, one of our features is our automated, our automated blog system. And so all the ones that we create that are automated through the system, that's IP of Carrot, but you can use it on your system as long as you're a member, but everything you create is your IP. Yeah, but you can totally move it, move it away from Carrot later if you wanted. Awesome, awesome. Brother, I, I appreciate your time today. So, so much information and, and so many nuggets there that, that people could take away from and just apply to, to their business, which, which I love. Um, so thank you so much for, with Leading With Value. Uh, thank you so much for, for your time and, and just, just sharing so much knowledge and, and sharing your company with us today. Dude, I, I appreciate the, the time and opportunity to connect with you in the Lab Code Agents community. It, it's something I'm, uh, you know, with Carrot, we've been so focused on real estate investors the past seven years that working in the real estate agent world the past year and a half has been really fun because there's a lot of differences between investors and agents, but there's a lot of similarities too. And so that's where it's cool to take what we've shown works so good for sellers, buyers too, but for sellers over here and go, man, how do we apply this to agents who really want sellers? And I uh, absolutely love to help you guys drive your businesses and make them, make them better businesses. So appreciate the opportunity, man. Thank you, Trevor. Have a blessed weekend. And thank you so much for the information. I'll definitely be contacting you and checking this information out. Cool. Awesome. Thank you guys. Have a good rest of the week.